Welcome to Right Now Workshop Podcast, where you can write a book and change the world. I'm your host, Kitty Buholtz, and this is episode 288, Write a Book and Change the World, an encouraging words episode coming to you on Sunday, May 1st, 2022. If you've been listening for very long at all, you know that I really believe that any of us could be writing books that change the world. And there's so many different ways that you could do that. You could just be the person who has this beautiful, soft, sweet, lovely, romantic, entertaining read that somebody can just escape into after a long day at work or um, just a difficult period in their life. Something that makes them feel like, ah, the world is okay, good wins out, love wins out. You could write somebody a thriller or a mystery that keeps their heart pumping and keeps their brain churning. Like, how are they gonna get out of this? How are they gonna figure this out? And it just like kind of gets your adrenaline going and you get very excited or you could write a how-to book how to you know the number of how-to books that i have bought over my life on computer various things because i used to work in computers i built my own computer once i love computer stuff and the number of books that i have bought on how to build this, how to program that. I had so many, so many. (laughs) There are so many ways that you could change someone's life for the better. Now, just to give you an example, just in the last year, some of the best books that I've read that have stayed with me for a while, and see, that's part of how you know whether or not you're changing somebody, how long are they going to be thinking about your book after they've read it? So for instance, I listened to the audiobook version of How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Kendi from the United States, and I was wowed and amazed and totally listening in, in, I would say, on the edge of my seat. That's what I started to say, but I was walking or running while I was listening to the audiobook. Uh, I was just so fascinated by what he was teaching me and what I was learning from him, things that I didn't know. And it was really, really interesting. And he wrote this book to help people change their minds about things, to inform them and to help them to think about things a little bit differently. And it absolutely did that for me. And I am so grateful for him to have uh, written this book. I loved it and um, I recommend it. (laughs) Switch on Your Brain by Dr. Carolyn Leaf from South Africa. I love this book so much. It's so interesting. You know that I'm a nerd for neuroscience and I have read so many books having to do with neuroscience and mindset and a lot of things that are like combinations and and um, overlapping areas of those two things. And this one is so interesting because it's all of the science, but sometimes she refers back to um, areas in the Bible where she's like, it says this in the Bible and this is the science that that has proved that this is a real thing that really happens. This is uh, really how you do change your mind about things and uh, how you can not be conformed to some other kind of thinking. It is so fascinating. It's, I'm still reading and listening to that one because it's so much. I have to stop it every now and then and just think it through. Oh, it's so interesting to me. And then there's the Money Mindset books by Denise Duffield Thomas from Australia. She also reads hers. She and uh, also read theirs. And um, I love listening to the author. It just feels like they're telling me something and they're teaching me something and they're encouraging me. And I love Denise's voice. She just sounds like so happy and excited to be telling you how she improved her financial life and all the ways that she helps other people to do it. And I love her books. Um, so many. I could like literally, I, I I wrote down so many nonfiction titles because I've read or listened to so many great nonfiction books just in this last year. But if you're a fiction author, also books that have really stayed with me, uh, the Dresden Files books by Jim Butcher, I've been reading them for years. A couple of my friends introduced me to him. Um, golly, 15 maybe years ago, something like that. There, He had already published um, at least five, six, seven books by then. And I just 
went through them like boom 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 oh my gosh i could not get enough of them and i to this day own every single one of the dresden files books and if somebody starts talking to me about harry dresden the wizard in chicago and what he did or what he did over here or who he fought here or like how he was like standing up for good against evil here i'm like oh i am a sucker for good against evil books i love it so it's a little bit of thrill it's a little bit of laughter and it's like like good winning out in the end it makes me so happy. Thank you, Jim Butcher. I love you so much. <laughs> Also, The Institute by Stephen King. That was one of my Christmas books, um, I think actually two years ago. Can't remember. Very recently, though. And I was enthralled and could not stop asking myself, could this really happen? Is this possibly really happening now and no one knows? What if? What if it is happening now? And 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 who would who would rescue these kids? Or could they rescue themselves? And I was just so into this book. In fact, I might have mentioned this, I think, on a different podcast episode uh quite a while ago, that I I think the reason why it took me so long was because every five or six chapters I would just stop and put it on the shelf for another week or two because I loved it so much. I did not want this book to end. And it's not a short book, but it was just so delightful and delicious. And, and it just fed all the things that I wanted out of a fiction story. Oh, and so I purposely tried to make it last as long as possible. My husband's about ready to start reading it because of how much I just was on and on about how much I love this book. And when he's done, I will read it again. And I don't really read a lot of books twice. So that's how much I loved it. And then again, like the awe, feel good. I'm just happy. I feel like love is a beautiful thing and people are nice and good and neighborly and people look out for each other. And all of those things I get out of Robin Carr's Virgin River books. I think I might be on book five or six by now, but um, I only started reading them after the Virgin River series was put on Netflix, of course, made out of her books. And then I started reading those like oh, this is exactly my kind of book i love virgin river and then i read the next one and the next one and again i mean i know she's got lots of books in other series too but also there's a lot of books in the virgin river series but i've been kind of spacing them out and just trying to make them last and enjoy them this is actually also the way i eat um the dark chocolate cheesecake i just have teeny tiny bites and try to make it last for like half an hour <laughs> so uh, think of all of the things that you could be writing about i mean it's not just fiction and nonfiction. It's children's books and poetry books business books how-to books i mean look at just the books behind me on my shelf i have so many books and i have gotten rid of more books than i now currently own because of having to move around the world it's very sad it makes me cry to have gotten rid of so many books um i, I have map books and atlases and um histories of a certain kind of people or certain certain kinds of places and there are so many kinds of books that could change somebody's world in some kind of really great way. And you have at least one of those books in you. And I just want to encourage you to believe. And if you don't believe, let me believe for you. You can write a book that will change the world for someone. And that is worth your time. And that is worth your effort. And that is worth all of the learning that you have to do and all the learning how to market and how to learn it, how to learn how to put yourself out there in a way that's comfortable for you, but that lets people know here you are and you have this book and to find the people that are like your people. These are the people that would love this book. This is a lot of work. I know it's a lot of things to learn. I know but it will be so worth it. So today, bookmark this episode, listen to it as many times as you need to over you know, the length of your writing life and keep telling yourself that you may be writing a book that will change someone's life. That is so worth it. And if the life that it changes is your own, double blessings. All right. I really, really hope that this encourages you and gives you some extra boosted energy for the writing that you do the next time you sit down to write. Have a fantastic blessed day and week, and we will talk again soon. Mm -hmm.